Folklore is not taught, it is learned. <laughs> Hello, my dear friends, I'm Ari Thirger, and today I would like to share a couple of words with you concerning folklore. Its meaning, importance, and what constitutes folklore, or in other words, the evolution of popular wisdom through time, which results in a rich, intangible amalgamation of ancestral experience, which, instead of dying out, it evolves and um, continues to be an important part in the formation of identity of populations through which strong bonds can be created between people. Because folklore isn't taught, it is learned. Meaning, through the share of experience and the wisdom we have gathered over time, we find common grounds of humanity and instead of dividing ourselves into several different groups focused on specific systems of belief, we converge to a center of accumulated learning and life's experiences that helps us to survive precisely by sharing insight through involvement and participation. Ah yes, um, <laughs> but before we start let me just uh, put this on the ground because I've been here before and I'm not taking any chances again. Luck is a fickle thing. Hold on and I shall get back to you in a moment, please. Folklore is the perpetual gathering of all cultures from times immemorial until our very day. It is as old and as young as we are. Folklore is the natural, organic, daily, familiar environment in which we born, live and die. It isn't static, it isn't stagnated, but rather a constant flowing of wisdom through the generations. Uh, because we involve ourselves in life, we experience life through ourselves and others. And the more we share information with one another, of course information that sprouted from lived experience, we accumulate crucial insight for our survival and we maintain identities. We learn and gift such knowledge to others, uh, to the young and the old, and for as long as there is interaction between humans, the knowledge keeps flowing and we continue to create ties which are essential to our survival and to express an identity inherent to us all, which is being human. Folklore, uh, as the name implies, <laughs> is popular traditional knowledge, the non-institutionalized knowledge of the people. Folklore is the knowledge and the um, preservation of traditions, of popular antiquity, but not just. Folklore is the link, the relationship through contact that connects the old and the new, the ancient and the contemporary, because we are still alive and experiencing life. As such, we are still creating knowledge. We are still creating popular traditional knowledge. Because folklore isn't just a vague idea of the spiritual, of the metaphysical, let's say, or concepts that are restricted only to intangible spiritual manifestations and popular narratives. Folklore also embarks on material manifestations and objects, utensils, all the things we create that serve as a human manifestation to create relationships and to help build lives. A whole body of popular wisdom that is maintained by our actions. Needs may change, fears and desires may change, and even concepts and objects may change, but human emotion is still there, and we continue to create and express ourselves in different ways to meet the same result as always, which is having a better life with whom and with what we interact with in our lives. We are part of a world where the encounter and relationship with spaces and people and persons is inevitable. So our actions will always be aimed at an effort to understand what surrounds us and also to minimize as much as possible all the negative aspects of our experience of being alive meeting what gives us pleasure 
and what aids us in prolonging the experience of being alive. This set of interactions and experiences creates a common wisdom that we share among ourselves, giving us identity. Many times we do not give value to folklore because it is not an exact science or because it is not institutionalized knowledge or even because we think uh, it is just accumulations of superstitions and or fantasies of the human imagination. However, folklore has an incalculable and priceless intangible value. To dismiss folklore, especially as a source of interdisciplinary knowledge, is a detriment to us all. M many times we look for an identity of our own or we fervently want to belong to an identity or even spend a lifetime looking for the identity that is best suited to our needs, desires and beliefs. However, through folklore, we realize that our identity is already rooted in the collective and we are part of a world built by the various human experiences over time. And we ourselves, through our experience, through living, are already part of that identity. But not only, we are also included in it and we are actively contributing to its construction and evolution. Folklore is the set of cultural creations of a community based on its traditions expressed individually or collectively, which are representative of its social identity. Folkloric manifestations are expressed through collective acceptance and both the dynamism and functionality of human actions that aim to create relationships with land, environment, space, and persons. Folklore expresses conceptions of the world and life, worldviews, belief systems, popular cults and devotions, ceremonies and rituals, taboos, prophecies and predictions, supernatural occurrences, costumes and adornments, rites of passage, initiation rituals, customs relating to private and public, public life, funeral customs, folk medicine, customs relating to functional life, commerce, transport, history, law, dialects, metaphors, cliches, forms of treatment, special languages, folk vocabulary, metric and versification, games in general, dances and balls, um, processions, vehicles, utensils, traditional festivities, yearly celebrations, dramatic cavalcades, choreographies, rudiments of architecture, sculpture, ex votos, ceramics, drawing, painting, decoration and craftsmanship, manufactures, musical instruments, contraptions and uh, working tools, uh, music that expresses popular representations uh, and linked to professions, to children, religious activities, instrumental ensembles, uh, folk music genres, popular poetry, popular written narration of solemn acts, dramatic pieces, novels, songbooks, romance, magic books, herbal books, popular riddles, literature, toys in general, children's beliefs and superstitions, theater, rhetoric, etc. You get the point. Folklore encompasses all human action and lived experience. As I said, we so often look so hard to find an identity, but through folklore, we find everything that was ever expressed that makes us human. In other words, we are all bearers of folklore and it cannot be taught, but it can be learned. We do not actively teach how to be human, but rather we interact with one another and as such we learn from each other because we share experiences, we share activities, we share human actions and desires and pleasure, we share humanity. When we interact with each other, we find identity. We build it, we evolve it and expand it. This is why we must understand folklore, talk about it, continue to express it and share knowledge. Because if this is not done, the same thing that happened will continue to happen, which was the creation of a misunderstanding about the, the folkloric 
contents of our life and society. Either because of the lack of an educational system that refuses to project it, or because of misunderstandings on the part of the several organisms of communication, especially from the part of religious organizations, which over the years, the word folklore uh, became absolutely, absolutely saturated with a bad connotation, gaining a pejorative stamp as something of little cultural value, stripped from its knowledge and synonymous with falsehood and superstition. This is very sad. Not to mention that, of course, uh, at one point folklore was once an instrument to help develop nationalism turn to extreme spectrums of politics, which has also been the subject of equally useless and dangerous controversies, further enhancing a bad image of folklore. If we isolate folklore from other studies linked to the human and social sciences, and if we even completely discard the rich folklore content, we not only lose identity, but also lose the notion of, of meaning as human beings and our fundamental roles, not only within human societies and as human beings, but also as people of the world, persons of the world. It is no coincidence that the majority of people with serious psychological problems, unfortunately, especially depression, especially depression, are indigenous peoples whose societies have been suppressed by cultures around oppressive religions in which language, customs, costumes, traditions, belief systems, utensils, religious objects, festivities, etc. were stripped away from them, were prohibited even, and they were left without an identity, left with no sense of being, and as such have fallen into despair without their identities. But this didn't happen just with indigenous peoples. This also happened and continues to happen with all of us. When we keep seeing folklore as mere peasant superstition and placed aside because it isn't a science or because it isn't institutionalized. Um, in fact, uh, <laughs> it is a good thing it is not institutionalized, otherwise we would be putting rules and specific canons to it and it would become something only a few would have access to and it would cease to be folklore to become religion. It would cease to be knowledge of the people to become a restricted knowledge controlled by an elite uh, as an instrument to control the masses. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I take the opportunity to address uh, another issue, if you don't mind, uh, which, which I, I consider a big problem, and I have noticed this from time to time, and it seems to be growing, uh, and it must be addressed, if only briefly, if you please. Um, the case of paganism and environmental activism. Paganism cannot be disassociated from environmental activism and human rights, especially the rights of indigenous peoples, which are the rights of the land and the right for life to exist. Protecting the environment and life will create respect and as such all peoples, including pagans, will be far more tolerated. <laughs> but we can't just speak of rights, we also have to be aware of, of our duties as a living species in this planet. We pagans uh, have to go out there and be very much active in environmental issues because this is our home and we have to protect it. We must also create awareness and this will avoid many future intolerance and persecution for all. However, uh, I must say that there's, there's another big problem and it is within neo-paganism itself, the institutionalization of pagan beliefs. There's been a tremendous amount of neo-pagan religious organizations, uh, many of which are not pagan per se, only in name or designation. Many neo-pagan religious institutions who preach intolerance and several outdated harmful traditions, creating quite a lot of limitations concerning knowledge and awareness of neo-pagan beliefs. 
This is even leading thousands of neo-pagans to abandon paganism because of such institutions and organizations who give a very bad name and reputation to paganism itself. Those who are not pagan will think such neo-pagan organizations reflect pagan beliefs and will thus back away even more from it. Institutionalization of pagan beliefs leads both neo-pagans and non-pagans to become wary and very much weary, forcing them to back away or abandon paganism for good. Neo-pagans must also fight against such groups and religious institutions and organizations if we strive to maintain a um, healthy coexistence between pagans and non-pagans and <laughs> among pagans. And this same sentiment is expressed in the way we deal and even think about folklore. Folklore has had a bad reputation because it has been used as a tool for indoctrination and to express intolerance. But folklore is all of us. It is inherent to every human being. It is the culmination of human experiences through time that brings us close together. Folklore, like mythology, is inserted in the cultural construction of the cognitive landscape. Uh, given that myths and legends reflect and propagate uh, perceptions of the world, interfering in the way humans relate to the environment, uh, landscape, spaces and persons. Folklore becomes quite relevant for understanding the imaginary of each society and human society in general. Folklore and mythology are cultural codes, not fantasy. An expression of a vast body of knowledge that we have been developing over time, mainly in the preservation of knowledge and human thought via oral tradition. In archaeology, for instance, we are faced with static realities and although it is possible to recover and acquire a lot of knowledge about the past, present and even to have a certain perception of the future in the ways human actions evolve in the face of fears and needs, it is not possible to preserve human thought regarding emotions, desires, pleasure. Uh, the line of thought that led to a specific action within an individual or collective belief that belongs only to reasoning to the collective cognitive process. We can find a piece that reveals some details related to cult, religion, even the intention for which the object was created, surely, but the emotions and the whole set of evolution of thoughts that led to that point are simply not preserved. That is why mythology and folklore become extremely important in the preservation of some cognitive processes and in legends and tales human emotion is imprinted. Folklore can serve as a source for studies of religion, history and culture of past peoples. Of course, uh, obviously, over time many cultural aspects change and evolve. For example, the Christianization of peoples uh, of various cultures had a tremendous impact on the change in human perception of the world, life and the human being itself, changing the world view of many peoples. But of course, it was not an immediate process, nor was it uniform. Christianity was instituted step by step and was imbricated with local religious conceptions prior to its arrival. There are moments in the history of, of peoples, of civilizations, of cultures that are moments of transition that turn all cultures, all religions and belief systems into hybrid realities woven between ancient clerical, political and traditional discourses. And this can be demonstrated through folklore, which preserves narratives in this reality or in this sense. Folklore, to a certain extent, of course, preserves a lot of cognitive factors, not only from various historical pasts, but also from moments of transition and after these moments as well, because such historical moments constitute quite abrupt changes of thought and habits, often traumatic, 
But there are also beneficial changes, such as technological developments that facilitate the daily life of human populations. And for this very reason, these developments also left strong marks on human thought, thus being included in folklore. For example, uh, the evolution of human societies towards a more sedentary life and centered on agriculture, giving rise to various myths, legends and tales about divinities and other beings linked to agriculture, the importance of the sun, uh, water, fertility. Uh, both the need and fear constitute strong human emotions that are expressed in various ways that prevail in the oral and material traditions of peoples. Folklore has been forming at all times. <laughs> we have folklore tales and legends that only emerged in the 19th century. But that doesn't mean they are just human responses to that reality alone in which, or, or the reality in which uh, they were created, right? Of course they do, of course they are as well. They, are, uh, they, they also reflect the time in which they were created. But like everything else in life, this latest type of folklore was not entirely created in a single moment, but rather it has been a culmination of ideas and emotions. Remnants of the long tradition of, for instance, hunters and gatherers, as well as of the, the peoples and moments when agriculture became an important phenomenon in the life and perception of life of human societies. Metallurgy and aspects of the imagination of ancient peoples survived in more recent folklore because even in moments of great change and even trauma, human expressions reappear and adapt to the reality in which we live. That is why folklore not only preserves past concepts, whether religious, cultic rites, belief systems, etc., but it also adapts to each reality. The old meets the new, antiquity joins the contemporary time. And in this way, human knowledge is preserved over time, constantly evolving and constantly relevant, because knowledge of the past continues to be applied at each historical moment in the face of new human needs and fears. In folklore, we always find a means of survival. We always find knowledge that allows us to create a relationship between space and time and need and fears and even find a point that allows us to insert ourselves into the reality in which we live. Folklore studies provide knowledge about various forms and examples over time and space and it helps in understanding the um, historical, social, cultural and biographical contexts in which folklore is generated and perpetuated. The study of folklore meets the efforts of the sciences of religions as, as it uses a multidisciplinary approach, helping to understand a set of factors responsible for sustaining a worldview. Folklore preserves prominent ideas which are organic parts of our lives, preserves cognitive and emotional habits structures that shape our thinking. Such prominent ideas, instead of dying, they transform themselves gradually into something different, which we see reflected in folklore. Folklore is human essence and knowledge expressed in words, oral and literary tradition, actions, pragmatic behaviors, and objects, physical auxiliary elements. Folklore is the preservation of human thought even after we are long gone and our bones turn to dust as if we were never here. But the human thought continues to exist beyond the boundaries of space and time for as long as there is one person to gift it to another. I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for your patience and for being in there to listen to this perspective. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, thank you for today. Farewell, my dear friends.